and then we were over helping. I thought we got beat on very on some very average moves, and we overcommitted because we had to get uh, we had to commit, and then we gave up open threes. Uh, we got to do a better job with that. We allowed them to get out and transition off of our turnovers, and. There's a stretch of the game we cannot we cannot hit a shot. We're getting I mean we're getting really wide open threes and did not you know come away with any anything. But still we got to keep fighting, keep doing it together. Like I told the guys, we've all been in tougher situations uh, than what we're in now. Uh, but we we got to do it together and figure it out together and fight together. And uh, we got another opportunity in a couple of nights. Would would you say the effort was there tonight? Yeah, I thought I thought it was good effort. I mean, especially when we didn't hit any shots in that in that end of that first quarter and and the second quarter. I thought the effort was there. It was. It's still um, working out some things, and um, but I thought I thought we played thought we played harder. Is there possessions we could have played better? Yeah, uh, there's a difference between uh, playing hard and playing better. We have to we have to play better. Um, and we will. Ben. Hi, Coach. Um, you activated Garrison Matthews today, but chose not to play him despite the sort of sh shooting struggles that you mentioned um, yeah. previously. What went into your decision not to play him? Yeah, right now he's not in the rotation. I, I, I threw um, Anthony Gill in there. He's going to be ready. Um, you will see him. You will see him soon. If just be patient. Chase. Hey, Scott. Um, as you guys continue to search for chemistry early in the season, um, is there any regret to not playing Russell more in the preseason, Davis, uh, some of these guys? No, not. I mean, I wish we would have had, but we're all in the same boat. The whole league is in the same boat. Uh, yeah. Be nice to to have everybody longer and have a normal exhibition season, but that's 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 not what's. Um, it seems like every game there's something different. Um, we still we we got a we got a gr good group of guys that have a lot of uh, skill. My have my job is to figure it all out, and and my staff and we will. Um, the the point that also with the, with our group it's hard to win a game in this league and a lot a lot goes into it from the scouting reports to the walkthrough to the possessions to the execution to the togetherness a lot goes into winning a game we're still figuring that out we haven't done that yet uh, but I, I believe in this group when we do uh, we're going to understand that we have to continue to do that but give them credit they they made they made threes tonight. They made threes and they took care of the ball uh, and give them credit. They haven't been taking care of the ball in their first few games, but they did that tonight and we turned it over, gave them 23 points and turnovers. Neil. Hey coach, uh, Russell was making a lot of his mid-range jump shots tonight, but I'm curious if you're okay with the frequency and quantity of shots that he takes from there. Yeah, I mean, he's this guy's a winning basketball player um, for I don't even know how many years he's been in the league now. 13, 13 years. Um, I've been with him for over going on eight now. And, um, a lot of people that don't love the competitive spirit that he brings and, and the tenacity and the competitive drive, uh, they want to nitpick on a 17 foot shot. Um, all the great teams spread the ball over the floor. And we wanna be a, a great team. We're gonna have to score in different areas, not just in the areas that um, some in the basketball world thinks that's the only shot you should take. Um, all the great teams, that's one big, you score at the, you score at the rim, you score at the line, you score in the mid range and you score at the three point line. You score off your defense, and we're trying to learn all those areas of the floor. Russell is a winning basketball player. The guy is what he's done already. Uh, we haven't won a game, 
but he's he's teaching these these young players uh, how important it is our job is and 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 that's uh that's priceless. Ava. Scott, you mentioned um, turnovers. I think we asked you about them after the first game as well. Tonight, they seemed a little bit more obvious. I guess, what did you see there? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're just turning turn it over. It's just too many. Uh, I mean, if you look at all the, all the players in the league that turn it over, the top 10, they're all great. <laughs> it's, Russell's going to have three to, three to four. Uh, we don't want him to have six. Brad's going to have two to three. We don't want him to have five. TB is not going to have four. I mean, he had he had bobbled like layup opportunities, and you know, one thing about TB, he feels horrible about it. He's very prideful, and and, and that hurts. But those those four turnovers aren't going to happen very often. Um, it is probably a case of just getting uh, the feel for his teammates. But we gave him a lot of points off of our turnovers, and when you're not making threes and turning the ball over, it puts a lot of pressure on. Every possession. I mean, I thought there was. I mean, Neto. Neto is a great shooter, not a good one, a great shooter. Uh, he missed six wide open threes. I mean, wide open threes. You can lace it up and look at them. They're wide open. Any given night, he's going to make four to five of those. It's good to see DB uh, make some shots, make some threes, and get fouled on some threes. That's you know, he's starting to get his legs under him, but. We're going to be fine. It doesn't feel good right now. Nobody, nobody's happy. Um, I'm not happy. I know we can play better and we will play better, but I, I'm positive about this group. Last question from Matt Paris. Hey, Scott, when every, when every game is different in terms of how you're losing, how does that affect the way you try and go about um, fixing things? Like how close can it, can I turn around B when there's something different every game? It's, I mean, there's no question, Matt, it's hard. It's definitely difficult because you, you think you got one thing. It's like that, you know, that cartoon, you plug the guy in one spot and then something else comes out. Um, but it's, um, we're, tr we're, we're going to keep working. We're going to keep um, putting some things together, rotations. We try to change it up a little bit. And, and then that kind of messed things up with, you know, Brad went out. Um, but it's all, these are all, I know the group that we have, I know Tommy's given us a, a good group to work with and a group that works and we will, we will get better and we will figure it out. Um, but it is, you know, a couple of things that we have to, we have to get, we're going to have to, um, we have to take care of the ball. And then defensively, we, we, we got to lock into all possessions and, and that's what I love about Russell and Brad. Now you have those two guys together. They, they will they they um they will share um with their teammates how important it is and and i've always been on on teams as a player and i've been on teams as an assistant coach and i've been on teams as a as a head coach you need players to, to challenge each other in practice and you need them to push and put pull for each other but you need them to hold so hold them accountable and and those two guys are going to continue to hold the group accountable along with myself and the staff. And, and I like, I like what the potential that we have it just, it just taking longer or a few more games than we, than we would like it to be, but we're going to keep fighting. We can't wait for the uh, few nights from now. Well, I think it's a lot of different things. Uh, they're, they're always different, you know, they're all professional. We try not to make the same mistakes all over again. Uh, but definitely I, I totally agree with the coach. And then you Go right ahead, Eva. Sorry. Um, it just looked like you found your rhythm a little bit more in the fourth quarter. Was that just what it was? You getting a feel for the game um, early on? Uh, well, hopefully. Hopefully. But, uh, yeah, of course, uh, I didn't play basketball for um, five basketball for seven months. And uh, now kind of have to e ease back into it, uh, playing against the top level players in the world. So definitely not easy. But, you know, that's something I got to do. That's what I'm here to do. So. Uh, you know, eventually I'll get there. Fred? Yeah, I was just to follow up on that, where, where is your... Fred, you muted again. Uh, I think I understood the question anyway. No, I was word, but... following up on the previous question, where specifically is your, your conditioning? 
conditioning is, uh, I think it's, it's at like 60, 70% maybe, which is good enough for the minutes I'm playing right now. Uh, but I think it's not so much about the conditioning, it's about just the feel for the game, uh, just having the rhythm, you know, I didn't have four teammates with me uh, during practice for several months. So having that out there, we don't really have much time uh, in the practice facility together. And I'm basically playing every day or every other day. And uh, it just is going to come come with time, you know. Might take a game, might take two. I think the, the last last quarter of the game was was a good step in, a, in the right direction. Chase? Davis, I feel like you guys have the potential to be one of the better offenses, or at least that should be a strength of yours. What, what's been holding you guys back so far, you think? Well, it's tough to have missing Rui in the, in the first games of the season. Uh, then, you know, me having the minutes restrictions in the, in the first games and uh, slowly increasing. I think it's, it's tough for the coaches with the rotations. Uh, it's tough for the players to kind of get the feel for each other. In one game, we have these guys playing together more than the next game. Other guys are playing together more. So it's not easy, I think, compared to last season when we had, it was pretty clear who was starting, what minutes we had, uh, what time everybody was coming in. So, you know, that that's a challenge as well. But, uh, well, I don't think that's the main reason why. I think, uh, you know, we, as every team, we haven't had much time together starting this season, you know, especially for the rookies. I think it's a tough, it's a tough situation. You know, they don't have the open gym. They didn't have the summer league. They didn't have the two or three months with their teammates before starting the season, basically. Ava. Davis, I just wanted to ask, did you guys um, come together as a team and, and talk about this game at all tonight? Just asking because we usually, you guys took a long time to come out. So I was, that's what I was wondering. Uh, you know, what we said in the locker room stays in the locker room. But uh, I can tell you this, then the only way we can get out of this is, is as a team. If we stick together, if we play together, we learn from each other, we help each other. And, uh, and that's basically the only way. You know, being negative about the four losses is not going to help us come back and win games. Uh, being positive and uh, helping each other in a good way, that, that's what's going to help us. Thank you. Neil? Hey, Dom, just to elaborate on that a little bit more, can you just give us a sense of what the general mood is right now within the locker room and the team? As I said, I'm, I'm not going to comment on the mood. Uh, of course, we're not happy we've we lost four games, but uh, as a, a, anybody will be in this position, but uh, the mood is that the, the only way for us to win is if we come together and we play together. Well, I mean, it's, it's a tough time, but you got to figure it out, you know. Um, especially for myself, I, I really, really hate losing. Um, so it's tough for me to kind of reset. But um, as being a, a leader, you can't lead when things are just going well. You have to lead uh, when things are not going your way. Uh, we got a group of guys here that wants to win, uh, that's trying to do the right things. And uh, part of leadership is being able to, you know, figure it out. Uh, I've always believed in, uh, you know, when adversity hits, it's a true measurement of uh, who you are as a man. And um, I really believe in that. So uh, have a little adversity early on, that's okay. Um, stick to your principles, stick to what you know, continue to lead and um, stay positive. And that's something that, I'm going to continue to emphasize to our guys, to our team, coach and staff, um, that it's a long season um, and we're going to figure it out. Fred? R Russell, do you feel like you have uh, more of a responsibility to portray that message given just how young so many of the guys on the rosters are? On the roster? Uh, the yeah, I feel like it's my responsibility uh, just being in this position. I believe that. Uh, you know, we, us as people get put in position and God put us in, in, in places and position in our lives that uh, whether it's to help other people and I always feel like I'm in this position and on the stage to help other people uh, and regardless of what it is. So uh, being a leader, you got to be able to help and lead by example um, and help the rest of the guys and, and find a way to be able to uh, continue to uplift them and, you know, show them the way. 
space. Russ, uh, just two years ago, I think you were on an OKC team that lost the first four, and then you guys turned it around and won seven straight. What do you pull from that experience as you uh, look at your situation now? Um, you know, you're a lot. You know, like I mentioned, man, we, we've been, I've been in positions where losing four games and three games, going on eight game win streaks, five game lose streak. Um, it happens throughout the season. Um, every team kind of goes through it throughout a year. Um, unfortunately, we're going through ours right now. Um, but we are a good team, and I truly believe that uh, we put our best foot forward. Uh, especially putting together a 48-minute game. And once we figure it out, um, we're going to be uh, difficult to stop. And um, my job is to make sure we stay positive as a team, um, continue to uplift our guys, um, and that's the most important part. Ava? Russ, you guys have shown that you can play really well through stretches of games. Are the issues when they're cropping up, are there things that – that players aren't noticing or haven't been taught yet, or are they just things that, uh, like, you guys aren't doing? What's what's the um, kind of? I, I wouldn't say that the guys haven't been taught. We're definitely well coached, and the coaches have done an amazing job of making sure we have all the information that we need. But sometimes, even as players, um, the game is going on. You have to figure it out on the fly. Um, whether um, different things that we may have may have not seen before, but to me, that all doesn't really mean nothing. Um, as a basketball player, as a team, if we play harder than the other team, we give ourselves a chance to win. Um, the X and O's is not a huge emphasis on um, if we're winning or not. Defensively, we got to be tougher. Um, and that starts with myself. So got to be able to set the tone and be tougher. Um, and, you know, that's just on me. And I got to make sure that I'm setting the tone for the rest of our guys that have something for them to follow uh, defensively. Um, and I think that's where we can make our biggest jump. Thank you. Brad? Russ, you haven't been getting to the line quite as much as you normally do. It's only three games, but is there any particular reason for that? Shit, I wish I'd answer for you, champ. I wish. I ain't been getting to the line the last couple of years, man. I don't know why, but hey, you know, maybe they don't want me to shoot free throws. I don't know. <laughs>